Um, sitting today with, uh, at the head table with uh, the Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation for Consecrated Life and the Secretary, Archbishop Carvalho, um, it's a wonderful thing to experience the unity and the universality of the Church. I think it was a wonderful experience of the solicitousness of the Church toward her religious uh, and her desire to understand them and to promote uh, the value of religious life at all the levels within our church in America. I believe that um, the number that, are, that came to the press conference today, the journalists, the general superiors, uh, are there because so many lives have been touched by major superiors by and their women religious. Their lives have been touched in hospitals, in schools, on the streets. When religious appear, they have a sense that God is with them. And um, so there is a great interest in the future and a great gratitude for the past. The message that uh, I will bring home to our members uh, and to the sisters in the communities that those members represent is the message uh, of the importance of religious life, the legacy on which we stand in, uh, as women religious in our country. We stand on a legacy of a powerful uh, work of God. And it is in, now in our hands to realize that in our times and to create something that others will receive in the next generations. To exhort us to living this great gift of consecrated life really well uh, for the sake of God and his kingdom. Well, in this uh, year of consecrated life, this graced moment that Pope Francis has given us all, um, provided us with an opportunity, an immediate opportunity to join with all of our sisters and brothers, religious across the country, uh, to host open house days. So we have immediately uh, seized the moment for collaboration. Um, there will be many ways in which we will continue to do that as we have in the past in our missions wherever the Lord allows that kind of collaboration for the good of his people. It is possible to have two conferences in the United States of women religious, as is possible to have a conference for uh, religious men, and a conference for religious women, which is very common in very many nations. The two conferences of women religious in our country presently serve a diversity of needs among the communities who are members of these conferences. Um, I often think of it that um, there are many manifestations of the Franciscan charism, which is but a value and a richness to the church. And similarly, I think that there is a richness that's brought to the universal church by way of more than one conference in our country at this time. Well, I should tell you what it was like for us as a, a new community that is still in its foundational years uh, to receive news of the apostolic visitation and then actually to experience it. Um, as a superior general and with my council and other leaders of the community who are major superiors, the first work um, after we had a visit with Mother Claire, I had a, a personal visit with her, which was really a moment to relish the gift we had been given in our charism. You know, uh, by her probing questions, asking us to reveal uh, what the meaning of our particular charism was. Uh, then we were asked to fill out a, a great deal of documentation, actually, which was uh, a work we embraced enthusiastically. And in embracing it, uh, what we realized was that it had prepared us well for our first chapter of affairs. It caused us, it gave us a forum for self-reflection and self-evaluation. And in that process, we were able to define two areas that were um, areas that became the focus of our work as a community in our first chapter when we discussed how to move forward. So it was incredibly valuable to us. But I think one of the most beautiful things I experienced beyond that in the apostolic visitation was when the two visitors actually came into our community. We quickly took them on a tour of all of our missions and apostolic works so that they could get a feel for who we were. And then they were eager to meet every one of our sisters and did. And uh, our sisters felt for the first time in that unique and singular way an experience 
of the universal church coming to them. And they spoke as if they were speaking and they wanted to know that the church and the Holy Father would hear those aspirations, those dreams of their hearts as young women who had been called into a radically new way of life by way of the call to consecration. And, uh, and I think in that, they felt closer to the church universally and globally.